Hi guys, this is Breaker SC2, and I am back with a replay that I took from Drop.sc. Actually, I got it from the uh, Cast It section, Cast It subsec subreddit of Reddit. And uh, in the lower left-hand corner, spawning is our Red Zerg. It's going to be Drone of Arc. And the upper right-hand corner, spawning as our Blue Protoss. It's Frost. Now, of course, this is a Diamond level ZVP, if I'm not mistaken. And I'd like to go ahead and highlight for the time being that you're probably hearing some kind of static that's coming from my microphone. Um, that's actually the phantom power supply that is doing it. I'm probably going to keep on testing this out, twerking it just a little bit, seeing where the bugs are, things of that nature, and if that doesn't improve, then I'll probably go out and buy a mixer relatively soon. But the main reason why I'm casting your replay right now, uh, Reddit user, I must say I love your name, it's Hut Grack Mountain. Very creative. Um, the reason why I'm casting this replay more or less, and I, I don't like to sham you in like this, is because I'm testing out my new audio system and making sure that uh, everything is up to par with what I need to be doing soon. In case you didn't see my most previously up or up uploaded uploaded video to YouTube, I'm actually in the middle of announcing something very big that's going to happen very soon. Okay, so Drone of Arc is going to go ahead and send out a drone to scout Frost and see what is up coming from this guy. Unfortunately, there's some spoilers in the. Uh, in the, I, what do, how do I put this? There were some spoilers in the upload caption for this replay on Casted. It's not something that I really like to have so much. Um, getting an idea of what happens in game is great, but at the same time, I mean, maybe not, maybe not, you know, you, you don't want to tell the guy that's casting your replay just when it ends. What I love the most about a replay is the element of surprise, and that's when. This is where I come in and say, when I remember that drop that SC was in absolutely ship shape, um, I would usually go in and download at least two replays a day, and cast them, and upload them to my YouTube channel, which is now why I've got about 400 VODs. I would just take random uh, replays from drop that SC and upload them, especially if the names of the players were relatively big. Now, Frost is going to come in here, and he's going to see that there's no pool coming from Drone of Arc, and... In fact, there is a third drone headed over to the far 9 o'clock position base, and a third hatch gets initiated. Back at home, Frost is going to go ahead and start on a Zealot. I like this move. It more than likely is going to be used offensively, if even just alone or anything of that nature, because there's no pool just yet, and this is one way that Frost can actually abuse his opponent's opener. Now the big advantage that I do have with this replay is I don't know who is victorious in it. So this is going to be just as much of a treat for you guys as it is for me. Um, in case you guys are just now, I don't want to say just now, but I mean in case you guys are uh, tuning into this just now, I didn't give you any spoilers, but I think we have some shape, or not some shape, but rather some perspective of how this game is going. As you can see, Chronoboost is already being applied to that cybernetic score. That means Frost has the intentions of just making a lot of hurt happen to Drone of Arc very, very soon. Three gates already down, and he can either throw down a Nexus, or he can throw down a fourth gateway, and then just potentially go all in from there. That probe is waiting for its moment to throw down a pylon. I love the position of this Overlord. Very standard. All you have to do is really watch uh, a high-level Zerg player on the front page, or not the front page, of uh, just whatever, you watch a high level Zerg player streamer and you get an idea of where to throw down the overlords on this map. This pylon is just barely out of scouting range of that overlord, but at the same time I feel like maybe there's a part of our Zerg that knows it's coming down. He stopped mining gas for the most part, he's only got one drone on it and from now on he should be concerned with just making uh, Zerglings to defend, especially now that he's aware of the pylon and the third base is under siege. 16 lings on the way, but without speed it's going to be a little bit more difficult to engage anything that comes at him. But Drone does have a good idea of what is coming at him in the near future. He sees the pylon, he knows he went greedy, he knows his opponent is trying to punish him with it. And now there's four stalkers on the way, which means four gateways back at home. Second gas was taken. 
and the hurt is now being put on. The army supply is relatively even, but I mean, of course, the early game mechanics of a Protoss are, is very strong at this stage in the game. And I feel like this base, this third base, might just be totally forsaken. There are no defensive spine crawlers coming in, and there's no effort being made to save that third whatsoever. Coming from Drone of Arc. <clears throat> Behind this, he's not he's continuing to only keep one drone on gas, and now nothing but lings are in production. This one zealot almost gets away, almost gets away, and now it looks like. Drone is trying to do whatever he can to shut down this forward aggression coming from Frost. Behind this, there has been no indication that a natural expansion is going to be taken. The main is fully saturated, not over. Typically, when, is, when a Protoss wants to expand, they'll oversaturate their main while simultaneously creating uh, their natural nexus. But here comes that big surround right within range of the spine crawlers, or at least one of them. And now the total surround comes in, but it looks like this just might not be enough. Luckily, the sentry was sniped. That means the ramp can't be force fielded. And Frost, I I feel like this might be the critical moment of the game where he just doesn't want to go all in anymore. He probably just wants to... Oh, he's considering it. He's considering it. That sentry, if we can just throw down one single force field on that ramp, that's all it'll need. The probe was just picked off, which means uh, reinforcement pylon is almost out of the question. At least making additional reinforcement pylons would be. Beyond this, the force field went down on that pylon just to keep it alive. But that's it. The utility of a sentry at this at this level of play is it's indes it's indescribably valuable but at the same time it looks like drone of arc holds he's got more zerglings i would perhaps maybe try and capitalize on chasing some of those units but of course that's just me saying this with caster vision <clears throat> all right the natural expansion has been started across the worker count from both sides is just a little bit in favor of protoss right now and i feel like Especially with overproduction of this many leans, yeah, okay, maybe it would be great, but this is just, I guess you could say, I'm learning something from a few of the mistakes that Drone of Arc is making. In this particular situation, it's okay to flood leans at your opponent, but the sentries are right there, oh my god, the surround, the surround is real, and the mothership is basically the only thing that's safe in this entire fight. The natural expansion under siege, and Frost loses a lot for this, but he doesn't lose any workers. He loses a lot of army. He lost one sentry just now, and he replaced it with two more. And the Lings are just going to come at that yet again. Fifth gateway is on the way as well, and that's just to help wall off here at the natural. The third has been retaken now by Drone of Arc, and he's got about 250 gas, and he throws down an evolution chamber. The question is, what will be the tech that follows with it or goes in queue with it? Beyond this, there has been, I guess you'd say, no real tech up coming from our Protoss. There's been no... How do I say this? No... Stargate, no... Robo, nothing of that nature. But I mean, with the number of sentries that are out here right now, I would say that it wouldn't be all that outrageous to see a robo follow-up. Basically, this would go very well, uh, coupled with Immortals. Plus one missile attacks now on the way, and both gases at the main and the natural are being taken right now. I guess you could say the third and the fourth gas are being taken. Let's just put it that way. I like this move as well. Frost is trying to keep himself alive a little bit more in the game. He's kind of clearing out some of these lings. The rocks here haven't been dealt well. They've now been taken down by Frost himself. But uh, I think the fact that there are no more lings at that side of the map, or at least there weren't any more that he could see in production, is kind of a tell that Drone of Arc is going into a different, I guess you say, a, a, a somewhat different tech tree. The question is, can he hold against the impending doom of seven sentries and a lot more in the way of gateway units? There isn't any plus one attack to follow this up, I might add, but stalkers can do a very good job of outranging approaches. They already do that by default, so as long as the force fields are amazing coming from uh, Frost, he'll be alright. Attack at the natural being attempted yet again. 13 roaches are on the way. Oh no, he's gonna. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. Is he gonna throw down? Oh man, the lings got out. And now I feel like all of those set, all of those force fields on the sentries were almost unnecessarily burned. There's 17 roaches on the way. 13 of them about to pop all at the same time. There we go. A huge chunk of them at the front lines. 
just as I say it. There isn't any force field here at the ramp, but it looks like, oh man, the Roaches are going to get a ton of free kills on those sentries, and now all of this army is just running back home. They're going to get chased down gradually, I think, but I, it's hard to say. I don't know which moves faster, a sentry or a Roach, and now they're turning around and fighting directly. Not quite the best move, especially given that Initially, he had seven sentries with this push, then it attacked on four more, and now he's only got five altogether. So he lost about six sentries in that previous engagement. Drones moving out, resuming droning, and now the force field goes down on the natural. Oh, excuse me, yes, the main choke. Chase back, another surround of sorts. It looks like the roach is accidentally attacking the rocks, and those sentries getting targeted down is very vital to the survival of the natural expansion for Drone of Arc. The, the supply difference now is 40. If we check the army supply, it's about 20-something, and that makes it just about even. But these roaches cannot chase down this entire army off creep. The sentry, or excuse me, the zealots can be chased down, but the stalkers cannot be. Sentry struggling to stay alive. And there's only two remaining. That is not too terribly good. A seventh gateway coming into the mix as well, and... You know, without plus one attacks to couple this for Protoss, this is actually a very weak army coming from Frost. Especially given the fact that we already have Drone of Arc starting on this plus two. Alright. So, Roaches and Lings just gotta move out across the map, gradually take down some pylons, and if all of those pylons are knocked out, that's 24 supply, which nearly supply blocks our Protoss. Alright, there we go, Overseer getting chased down, still alive. Gas is at the natural expansion and just now being taken, an infestation pit going down behind this, and I think I can see why um, he's doing this. He's like, okay, well this guy doesn't have a robo. At this stage, I would say going straight to hive tech, going straight to uh, swarm host, going straight to anything with an infestation pit would be to the advantage of Drone of Arc. But look at the huge supply gap right now. I mean, is there any surviving this attack that's coming at him right now from Drone of Arc? This is not good. I mean, the, there's more and more stalkers warping in, a, in an emergency, I guess he's a uh, frenetic engagement. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on with, with this steady stream of roaches coming across the map. They've already got speed, and it's going to be high tech coupled with, I feel like, vipers. Because the Hydralis Den is going down right now, there's no upgrade that came from the infestation pit. So, I mean, that can only mean vipers. The question is, will there be any need for them? 70 supply difference. And Frost is trying desperately to hold on here. He's only now getting Immortals into the mix. Plus one Carapace now on the way as well since, you know, Hive Tech isn't done and thus plus three can't even begin. But now that natural expansion oversaturated. A few too many probes pulled from the main there. Did Was there a run by of some form? There was not. That Those only two probes that were picked off actually came directly from frontal engagements and the fourth base under attack. The natural is actually being harassed right now. I imagine it warped in from this pylon, but Hydra's just now get into the game and deal with the problem adequately. Or do they? Uh, is the queen going to go down? No, no, no. Nice save there by Drone of Arc. All right. Little moments like those let you know that a diamond player has the potential to become a master's player. Viper is now entering the mix, and it's going to be plus three attacks coupling our Zerg's main army, and it's already at 200-200 while Frost is at 98. This is not looking good for our Blue Toss. It really isn't. Um, at this stage, I would say getting High Templars into the mix would be his best bet, but at the same time, I he doesn't have the economy necessary to make the number of High Templar he will need to both storm his own, his enemy's army and throw feedbacks on the vipers, if that makes sense. He is going for the robo, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, I mean, he, excuse me, the, the, he's going for Colossus, is what I mean to say. He's going for that, but at the same time, I feel like it's, it's, it's just too late in the game, you know? Um, Blink Stalkers can help out a lot in this situation, they can, t they are effective at targeting down vipers. 
there's only three, and on top of that, Blink Stalkers also add, say, sustain to the army that Frost has, but the one thing that's working against him the most is the lack of upgrades. He's only got plus one now at the 20 minute mark, he's getting plus one armor as well, and this entire Roach Hydra Viper army is now storming across the map. Force fields are going to go down as effectively as possible, but there are the Yoinks, the Immortals getting pulled out immediately, so there goes the major DPS source versus Roaches from this entire army, and a Yoink on a sentry. I think that's just bad manner at this stage. I mean, he could essentially throw down the Blinding Clouds and he would be in a much, much better position than he already is. Yoinking yet again another sentry. And this reminds me of my least used unit in the game, the Viper. The Blinding Cloud going down on the choke, and this forces all of the units into the main, if not to the front lines to fight. And that just exposes those Stalkers so much that they don't want to be in the front lines to fight this. Colossus now enters the battlefield, and the natural expansion is now being targeted down itself. That falls, and there goes the economy. Drone of Arc now pulling back, and I I can't say what exactly the plan is here for Frost. He's down so much in the way of supply, he just leaves the game not so much as a GG. Alright, so... Thanks for watching, guys. Once again, I am BreakerSC2. Maybe consider following me on Twitter, and I will... Uh, how do I say this? I'll, I'll, get, I'll keep you guys updated on the big news that's coming up. Like, this is more than just myself. Catch you guys next time.